Hi everyone, this is Megan Mitchell with Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep. And today I'm here to bring you some exciting news and cover a topic that I often am asked about, and that is the 90 day exam waiver. So if you are taking the exam, we're gonna walk you through what this waiver is, who is eligible to apply for it, and what this will mean for you as a test taker. So tune in, and we are going to go ahead and jump right in. So what is the 90 day exam waiver? So when you take the exam, you are given a score sheet printed out for you um, that says either you passed or you failed. If you are not successful and you do not pass the exam, you have a 90 day waiting period before you can sit to take the test again, to retest. However, there is an exception to this and that is with the 90 day exam waiver. If you are approved for the 90 day exam waiver, you will have the opportunity to test again sooner than 90 days. And why would you wanna do this? Maybe you narrowly um, did not pass the exam and you have the content in your head or you have a job on the line or time is of the essence and you need to sit sooner than those 90 days. But the 90 day exam waiver only applies to certain test takers who narrowly fail the exam. We're gonna talk about what those requirements are because if you are tuning in, this is May of 2022, the requirements have actually just changed. So we're gonna talk through what those changes are and it's actually going to allow more people to apply for the 90 day waiver. Why would you apply for the 90 day waiver? Like I mentioned, if you were close to passing, the new requirements are if you were within 10 points. So if your score was within 10 points of the passing score and you believe that testing again sooner would be a benefit, you should apply for the waiver. Um, we'll talk in a minute about, you know, if you are kind of thinking about if this is the right decision for you, what it would take to make that decision. But it is an option if you are within 10 points. So there's a lot of people who are um, reach out to me and they're on the fence. They are not sure they want to apply. Um, why would this be? So like I said, if you are not successful, generally the rule of thumb is that you have to wait 90 days unless you are approved for this waiver. However, the decision to test again sooner than 90 days is a personal one. Some people are definitely like, I want to test again. I want to I feel very confident. I was very close. You know, that might be that you were within just a few points. And then other people are like, you know what? That was a very traumatic experience for me. I feel incredibly burnt out. I committed a lot of time to this. I'd like to wait the 90 days. So it really depends. Some people might want to test right away and some people might be able to given their life circumstances, um, while other people might prefer to take time to reset. Maybe there's a lot going on in their personal life at that time, or maybe they just want to take some time to take a step back, practice self-care, and wait the 90 days. So what I suggest to you is, is if you are on the fence, if you're considering this, self-reflect. Determine what works best for you um, and just make a decision that's going to work best for your mental health and for your studying routine because it does take a big commitment and it takes a lot of effort to put in the work to study for this exam. So getting to the exciting information, who can apply for the 90 day waiver? Um, if you failed your ASWB exam, the bachelor, master's or clinical level by 10 or fewer. So if you did not, if you were within 14, 15, you're not eligible. If you are anywhere between one question and 10 questions, you are eligible to apply. And this is why I have this in all bold. This is a new update. It used to be only five questions. So they have expanded the range, 10 or fewer questions you are now eligible to apply. Um, like I said, if you are above that threshold, if it was more than 10 questions, you will need to wait the 90 days. But it's important to note, not all states and provinces allow this waiting period. So it is state by state dependent. So what I will say is check with your state. I'm sure it is somewhere on their website to determine if you are even eligible to sit closer, um, if you are able to sit 
sooner than the 90 days and if you're able to apply for that waiver. How do you apply? The ASWB website will be the, the way that you will find this information. We have a link here, which we will also include in the YouTube video. But if you just type in ASWB 90 day waiver and Google that, you will yield a search where you can find exactly where you are looking for that information. It used to be a much more complicated process. You'd have to get um, your employer to say that your employment is at risk, and it was a much more strenuous process. Now, you can do it all online. It is all on this form that is linked here, and it says, in your waiver request, give three to five sentences as to why you are applying for the waiver. So remember, someone from the board is going to be reading this. So you want to be compelling. You want to be persuasive. But you also want to be honest. Why, why do you want to take this test sooner than the 90 days? Um, what I suggest you include is if your job is at risk or a promotion is being held up, if financially this is holding you back, if, this, if you are a multiple-time test taker, this test is not cheap. Um, these materials are not cheap, so if it's causing you a financial burden, um, keep it concise but honest, right? Three to five sentences, um, and like I said, just use your judgment as to what you want to put in that request, but I suggest being honest and really thinking and self-reflecting on why you are applying for that 90-day waiver. Now we're going to cover some misconceptions because I get misconceptions all the time about what the waiver is, what it does, what it allows you to do, what it does not allow you to do. So we're going to cover some of these and I'm going to kind of set the record straight about what is allowed and not allowed with this 90 day waiver. So the first misconception is if I get approved, I don't have to take the exam again. That is false. Even if you did not pass by as little as one point, you will be sitting for the exam again. A waiver approval means you have to take the test again. It's just you will be taking it sooner than the 90 day waiver period. So it's not the waiver is not an override saying that now you get a pass. Um, it's just allowing you to sit again in a shorter amount of time. So there is never an override that you will get from this waiver that allows you to override a failing score. Misconception, I have to get a letter from my employer to get a waiver. That was very heavily suggested in the past, but they have now changed the process. Um, so that is false. This is not required, but if you do have someone that is willing to kind of speak on your behalf, or if you get denied and they, if someone from your in, um, current place of employment is willing to write you a letter, that's gonna help you make a stronger case, but it is not a requirement. Um, so just know that your job does not have to be on the line any longer for you to be approved. But if this is the case, make sure you include that in your rationale. Other misconceptions. If I get approved, I don't have to pay to take the test again. Um, people always ask me this, and that is unfortunately false. You are going to have to pay whatever applicable fees there are to test again if your waiver is approved. Um, that is all done um, obviously, on a state-by-state -state basis, um, it is done through your registration to take the exam. You will need to still register to sit again, and you will need to register to pay to take the test again. Another misconception, a waiver means the ASWB will rescore the test I already took. Because some people say, I failed by one, so this waiver means they're going to rescore it. False. A waiver does not mean your test will be reevaluated or rescored. The waiver is only going to allow you to register for the exam to sit again sooner than 90 days. It has nothing to do with scoring. It has nothing to do with licensure. So also make sure that you know that the waiver does not affect licensure at all. It's so that you can sit for this exam sooner. Another misconception, I already know the information, right? I was just a few points off. So if I get approved, if I can sit sooner than 90 days, I'm just going to go in there and take the test. I'm just going to sit for the test again. False, right? You need to use your score sheet that was printed out for you and use that to guide what areas to strengthen because you did not get a passing score. You're going to want to bring up those weak areas so that 
you can have your next success be successful. So I definitely do not encourage you to not study again at all. Um, tweak your studying. I don't also encourage you to throw everything out the window and start from scratch, right? Um, use your failed attempt as a reflection what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and you have the opportunity, you already sat for the exam. So you have the opportunity to think about what, what did you see on that exam that was very challenging to you? Were you very anxious? Um, did you go too fast? Did you find yourself running out of time? So tweak your studying, right? You don't want to do absolutely nothing and you don't want to rehaul everything. So use that exam score sheet to guide what areas to strengthen. Tweak your studying so that your next, so your next attempt will be successful and you will get that pass. My biggest advice, you are your own best advocate. Advocate for yourself and make sure to express why you need the 90-day waiver, right? We, we always are advocating for our clients, but now is your time to advocate for you. So if you are applying for that 90-day waiver, make sure that you are really expressing why it is that you think that you will need to sit sooner than the 90 days. And also, the 90-day waiver does not give you accommodations. So if you think you might need accommodations too, maybe you need extra time. Maybe you need snacks throughout. Maybe you need your own room. I do have a video on that. So check out our video on that topic. If you are struggling, if you are a multiple time test taker and you're having a difficulty breaking through, I definitely suggest checking out our accommodations video. Accommodations can be very beneficial, but that is a completely different topic. That's a completely different process. So if you're interested in that, check that out on my YouTube channel. If you are looking for more study content, Agents of Change has more paid study materials. Check out our website at agentsofchangeprep.com. We also have free materials up there. We have a blog. We have something for everyone. So make sure you take some time. Check out our website. This is our contact information if you have any specific questions. And of course, I want to leave you with some words of advice. If you are testing again, um, remember that you have the ability to do this. This test is hard, but you can do this. You got this, believe in yourself and know that you have the potential in you to be successful. Thank you for tuning in.